Hey everybody, it's Eric from the Mature Minded Gamers. Today we are going to review the season finale of Star Trek Picard Season 1. I have my bridge crew plus one with me today, Brad, Will, and Ben. Guys, say hello. 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 All right, I'm not going to lie. I cried in this one a couple times. Some for sadness, some for joy. And we got a lot of things right, which is surprising. We definitely missed some things, especially that multi-tool that was a big letdown, in my opinion. Uh, we had talked about it maybe possibly fixing Picard's brain issues, which I think, in my opinion, would have actually worked better than how they did it. But uh, anyways, let's uh, let's break down this episode. Brad, would you like to start us out? Tell us your opinions on season one. Or not season one. Sorry, the season finale. Yeah, so I I really liked this episode. I mean, I, I think uh, I just finished it, so I think I've got a little bit of the like energy level uh, still coming off the episode. There were lots of part, lots of different aspects of it that I, I liked uh, for starters. Uh, I, I liked the way that Picard um, did the, did a very, you know, what I would consider Picard thing by giving Soji the option uh, to, uh, to redeem herself, to not be the destroyer. Uh, it kind of calls back to um, the the diplomatic side of Picard. It also, you know, I kind of lost my train of thought there. Um, well, let me let me stop you there, because okay. that was one of my key points. Was Picard's speech about that? About we're gonna teach we're gonna teach them like we teach all of our children by example. I thought that was an awesome moment, and I and they and they followed through too. Like sometimes episodes or shows will give you a great speech like that and then you're like oh that was your example but wow it really really delivered i probably one of my favorite parts of this episode was how that all played out that section of it yeah it, it was it was really good the way that that he he went up he gave a, a public speech in front of the federation and and the the romulans and soji to give soji the option to do this and had she uh, you know given her option of of closing the rift of shutting down the transmitter. She proved to the Romulans that their, their long told myth uh, was something not to be concerned with at this time. And I don't know, I really dig that. I mean, to me, it was almost as if, you know, the Picard has been talked down to almost this entire series. And finally we actually get a glimpse of the original Picard in my opinion, like the next generation Picard that we really haven't seen from the entire series. And all of a sudden, bam, there he is. I think it's just, just almost like it's been building up to this moment to actually see Picard come back in full, full all, all glory. Ben, what do you think? Along the same lines, I think with Picard and next generation, and this is going to sound like a goofy thing to say, but there are some great quotes that happen in next generation things that patrick stewart had said as captain mccard that have resonated with me uh throughout my life and tonight was really the first thing a quote like it just stuck in my head uh, uh fear is an incompetent teacher and it just reminded me of who jean-luc picard is when he was referencing uh, the organics that had been teaching uh, the sense and, and how it resonated through that whole season, like fears and incompetent teacher, like the sense when they had their uprising on Mars and everything was going on with Romulus and all those decisions were made out of fear and not out of the, the Federation willingness to help. And it kind of just brought everything back full circle. And, and like Will and Brad both said, it just, it really drove home to me that it was still Jean-Luc Picard from Next Generation. All right, so what do we think about... So one of the things that I struck, struck me as kind of lame is the way that Seven took out uh, Sarissa. So I'm glad, I'm glad it went down that way, but it felt like it was kind of a, an easy way to eliminate her. What did you guys think about that? What did you guys think about her being on the cube in the first place? I didn't I see kinda, that coming. Right, I kind of wonder, like, why couldn't the the... EBs have actually taken her out in the episode before. Like, why did she have to still be alive for her brother to have that conversation? Like, it, to me, it was kind of a pointless. And I think it was more powerful in a way to have the EBs take her out. It's like, why did Seven of Nine actually have to do anything in that regard? Or I would have liked to seen her get taken out by 
by them like she almost has seven killed and then the you know the evs come in and save it and take her out there that, i would have been okay with that too i just didn't i just thought it was a little too easy for seven to kill her i don't know she's been built up as an awesome villain and i really liked her as a villain and i feel like she didn't get the death that she deserved well uh, the thing is though we heard her fall but i mean as we know she has that teleporter what what prevented her from teleporting out we didn't actually see her hit yeah it's true but i don't really think they're gonna do that but maybe yeah it, it could be a palpatine kind of thing too she could come back in about 30 years as a clone yeah as an as an xb they saved her as an xb yeah i mean i wasn't really bothered by the fact that that seven of nine took her out i mean it gave seven of nine validity in the series or at least in the finale to be the one that took out narissa especially given her her affinity towards Hugh and and the fact that Narissa killed Hugh. I was a little bit bothered with the fact that Narissa just kind of, you know, sprung out of thin air there. Uh, you know, I too assume that that she was taken out by one of the XBs or at least um, um, had escaped or, or something else that she wasn't on the cube. So the fact that she still was, despite everything else that had happened, was a little bit of a disappointment, but but sort of redeemed by the fact that that she had a, a very small um, you know, not even a second or a third story in this, but like a, a really passing moment with seven of nine who, who, you know, kicked her butt and, and threw her off the side. I thought that was appropriate. And, and it was uh reason enough to give seven of nine purpose to come back next season to, to kind of feel um, vindicated, Needed. I guess. Yeah. So my prediction for the season two, just based on how she died is she, she's not dead. And we will see her in season two. I really hope we don't. I, I, the, the whole Narissa storyline is toast. Or are you I, talking I, about seven of nine? No, I'm definitely talking about Narissa. I don't think she died. I, we didn't hear her hit the ground. And I think we're going to see her back in season two. That's my prediction. As what, though? What, what purpose or what plot point is she going to serve? Uh, we, we know nothing about what season two is going to be about. Well, I, I know, but th- you you think you, you feel very strongly we're going to see her again, but for for what purpose? That's what I'm curious. Uh, just to be the next villain or, you know, continuation of the villainous of the Romulans. Hmm. I mean, because obviously we know O is not dead. So or whatever her actual general, whoever, I don't even know her name. Ben, what was it? I have no idea. I, right. I just know I know her as O. <laughs> right. Riker, Riker kind of said that, you know, whoever you are, Commander or Commodoro, I thought that was great. What, what do we think about the way they end Data story? I thought they did an excellent job with that myself. So what were your guys' opinions on that? I truly felt that the ending that was in Nemesis for Data, obviously it was really quick, it was really fast, and I just truly adored uh, the ending, if they, they, the closure they gave that relationship between Captain Picard and and Data, it was uh, like I couldn't have asked, I think, for a better send off of that character. Yeah, I mean, I'll say the same thing. I, I think that it was the a good ending to to Data's character overall. That he really aspired to be human, and he died in a very human way. I agree. Um, I think if Tasha was the one standing by his bedside, though, that'd have been better. Ah, uh, the way Data dreams. Do electronic sheep dream though? Just tell everyone I was fully functional. <laughs> his last line. <laughs> yeah, yeah th- they did a great job with that. That was one of the highlights of that episode as well. So, what do we think about? And, and I kind of thought this was going to happen at the end when they were on the bridge. I thought Soon was going to be on the ship with them. We were going to get him for season two as like their science officer or something, you know. Mm-hmm. I was kind of sad they didn't go that way. And maybe he is. Maybe he'll be a surprise crew member. Or yeah, I, or maybe a recurring character. I don't know what it is. I, I, I You know, I'm going to disagree with you both again on this one. I think I think he's done. I, I don't think that we're going to see another Soon type uh, android. You know, aside from Picard, obviously, but we're we're not going to see another soon type type android. That storyline's buttoned up and been finished. You really don't think they're going to bring him in for season two? Nope, I do not. I agree with Brad. I think they're probably going to try to open the door for 
Jordy, Worf, but I think they'll probably play on different characters that maybe didn't make an appearance in this first season. What did you guys think about the the um, the way that Dr. Girardi um, kind of redeemed herself? Do you get? Mm-hmm. I mean, do you even think that was a a redemption, or do you feel like like I don't know, like? I th- I think with her going back in and saving Picard and rescuing him out of being imprisoned, I thought was was pretty awesome. Um, but I mean, they kind of just passed it off as they they she still killed um, Maddox, and it kind of just left that of her taking her to prison as just kind of like, oh, we're good now. I still don't trust her. I yeah, mean, I don't think I'm gonna trust her because of everything that's happened with her and the things that she's done. I I'm uh. I maybe she redeemed herself a little bit. I think there's going to be some there's going to be a reckoning at some point in the future where that's going to come up as a as a as a point of contention. And I think it needs to happen that way. What if she goes to jail and then they need a science officer? Who well, I didn't call? say she was going to go to jail. I don't I don't know about that. She's going she's to go to Starfleet jail. They're going to call a doctor soon. <laughs> that's definitely not going to happen. Oh man, I, I I'll bet you. Look, at, look, like blanket statement. The reason I think that she's not coming back, that the data is not coming back, Narissa, whoever, and even I think you know us seeing a lot of seven of nine isn't going to be a thing either. Is that they've they've said from the beginning that Picard was going to be a show on its own that he didn't want to retell the stories of the past, and by bringing up these characters over and over and over and over again, that's doing next generation over again. And and I think for this to stand up on it as its own series, it needs to start fresh here. Now that he's he's sort of tied up some loose ends from his past, and we're going to look forward into a, a new sort of Picard and a new you know adventure in space. What about Seven and Raff, uh, Raff, Raffy there at the end? Did we have any indication that they were a couple? No, I don't think so. But I mean, we kind of got that. <clears throat> Uh, earlier in the season that Seven had been uh, intimate with the uh, the gangster chick. I don't remember which episode that was. I think it was the first episode we saw Seven in. And <clears throat> didn't really get it from Raffi, being that, you know, she went to go see her son, but you don't know what ha- you We don't know that she had a husband, a wife, what what have you. Uh, so, no, that, that came as a total shock to me. And I think because they don't really remember seeing them having too much screen time together. I mean, they um, had a little bit, but it wasn't like, like uh, you know, a long interaction. Come on, man! Next generation, Riker and Troy had a relationship with some random rando on a planet every other week. <laughs> well, I'm just talking about in this in this show. It's like maybe they said like two words to each other, and then all of a sudden, bam! They're they're holding hands. I don't know. It's just, I, I guess I, we don't know how much time passed, you know, before I, they left. I would have liked to see some build up there too. I thought it was, I didn't really see it coming at all. I mean, we kind of, like you said, we knew seven was that way. Oh, but here's the thing is I have no problem with it. It's just, there were, I wish maybe it would have just been a little bit more build up into season two. I'm oh, fine no. with them having a relationship. I could care less. It's just, I just don't, I didn't, I wanted a little bit more relationship building there. Like we got that between Agnes and Rios too. Like you, <clears throat> you kind of saw the building of a relationship. So her at the end, putting her hand on him, it was like, no surprise. I'd already seen that build up, but with seven and Raffi, it was just like, bam, that what just happened here. So I get it. All right. So do you guys think they should have let Picard die? Or do you like the way they did it by bringing him back? Because after he died and we weren't for sure what was going to happen, I'll be honest, I was okay with it. I thought they did a fantastic job. I was man crying at that point. They did a great job with his death scene. Right. If he had been permanently dead there, I would have been fine. Um, I would have still kind of been curious on why they would have still called the show Picard, but I would have been fine with, with him going on to the next chapter. Uh, Me as well. Like I I had already, (laughs) I'd already come to terms with uh, Picard dying. Uh, Like you said through that scene, like I thought it was really well done, really well handled very well written and acted and I had made my peace with it. So probably a little more shocked when uh, the, the light comes through and he's going uh, to the other side, which is not uh, where data's going, 
but uh, yeah, I had made my peace with it, and I would have been a hundred percent okay with uh, the character passing. Yeah, I don't have much more to add. I mean, I was right there with you. I, I sort of, while a part of me uh, expected that to happen. I mean, the the whole him being uploaded in the Gollum thing, I think was, uh, I, I think we were led to, you know, we were kind of led to that stream. Um, in the past couple episodes, I mean, that, that, that was sort of a given that it was going to happen. Although I, I think, you know, even episode one or, or our previews to this, I, I, I sort of felt like this series could stand up on its own as an, as a, as an ode or a dedication to Picard. If he just lived through the first season and the rest of the, the series sort of lived on as, in his honor. So I was, I was hoping for that a little bit. Do I feel negative about it though? Not really. I I think I'd be curious to know how long he wants to do this role, but I think it does put the whole series on a time frame. Uh, I don't think we're going to get seven, eight, nine, ten seasons out of this. We're going to get maybe, you know, three or four before Sir Patrick Stewart decides to go back into retirement or take on different roles or something like that. Um, I, I think you can only live live on a pet project like this uh, long enough before he'll he'll want to go back to 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 resting again. So that's my thoughts. Why didn't Picard call on the holograms to drive the ship? I was waiting for that moment. I wanted them all to come on and help him, and they ne- they never showed up. Were you guys disappointed, or were you glad that Picard uh, were, was able to do it all on, on his own? Well, with with the doctor there, but I'm, I'm ambivalent. I don't know that I cared one way or the other. Yeah, to be honest, I, it didn't even cross my mind. It was to me more of a what when he said. Uh, Let's see if I was paying as much attention as I thought to Rios, kind of reinforcing that things are going on in his head that uh, he can neither control or deny anymore. And I, I think it was a great uh, showing of his character uh, and his willingness to get it done and just hoping that he got it done right. So, yeah, I didn't even think about the the uh, holograms until you mentioned it, Eric. Yeah, I didn't even think about the holograms myself either. I to what you kind of said ben was i like the fact that that he didn't and you know a lot of things going on in his head but in my mind when i think about that i'm just thinking of how picard is always analyzing situations and watching other people and making sure that they're on point and on task and he's he knows what's happening at all times and i mean that just goes to show you that he's still got it all right so we see some robotic looking tentacles is what that reminded me of coming to that portal when it was open is that control who is that <laughs> it's a <that> control <laughs> it reminded Section me 31. a little what, what were those things in the matrix called like in the real world but not in the matrix that's what it reminded me of those type of tentacles that were ripping apart their ship that's the original. true i can't remember what they're called either but i know what you're talking yeah, about that's that's the first thing i thought of I thought it's it was actually Galactus. Cross over to the uh, Marvel universe, and that's actually um, what Loki was trying to bring in. <laughs> no, I mean we've seen ambivalent or whatever the word is, all powerful, omnipotent. Uh, be- uh, that's it. Whatever beings, you know, in Star Trek before. So I mean, this is just another in the long list of of world ending or galaxy ending creatures that control everything. Maybe it's Q. You know, we know that there are other other planes of existence, like species eight four seven two from Voyager. So this that's very much just a, a another parallel or uh, a parallel dimension or a another realm of existence that could be completely android or AI driven, um, similar to the, the fluidic space of um, of species eight four seven two. And while we're talking about some of the space scenes and I, I don't know since we're going a little bit different on the structure on this one i i just want to talk about something that really kind of irritated me uh about this episode and that's uh while i loved the whole scene with acting captain Riker, what i didn't love was that every ship in the fleet was the exact same ship uh 20 some odd years ago we did deep space nine on probably a third of the budget and we'd have battle scenes that had like 45 different classes of starship, but every Romulan ship was the same and every Federation ship was the same. And I felt like that was probably the laziest thing I had seen up to that point on this series. 
I didn't even notice that. All the Federation ships were the same. Yep, they were. They were all the, how did he put it, the the baddest weapons in, in the galaxy or something like that. He was very cocky about about the his ships. In that particular scene, like, I'm watching it on a 4K TV, streaming in 4K, and just, it looked bad. Like, all the ships on one side, all the ships on the other, Picard's little ship in the center. And it just, like, I probably could have done slightly better with my MacBook. But, I mean, that was the one <laughs> thing that really took me, like, out of the story for a minute. It's just like, what? What just happened here? Who made this call? Who made this decision? But other than that, that was really the only thing in that entire episode that really took me out of the moment. I... uh so I, I noticed that and it and it was it was irritating, but but to me the parts of the space scene that irritated me were were you know very minor annoyances. The way that um it seems like we've reimagined the way that warp works and the way that phasers work and and you know even inter- interstellar combat kind of has changed from from Star Trek uh in the past to what it is now and uh, what what they did felt a lot more like Kelvin universe or, uh, um, you know, that style of warp drives. And that's that's a picky, tricky sort of nerdy thing to even be annoyed about. But but it is. And and I, I you know, I think that that probably annoyed me more than the fact that they were all the same ship. I mean, it was lazy and I thought that, but I sort of quickly dismissed it as well. Uh, I watched it on my Google Pixel 3 uh, on my lunch at work, and I didn't notice it. So do we think the Romulans are going to be a main villain in Season 2? I mean, that's a pretty massive fleet. I didn't Their really whole world blew up. How did they have so many ships? Mm. We talked about this, Will. That's one planet out of God knows how many. I don't care if we talked about it. It still bothers me. They don't, they don't park their ships on the planet, Will. Oh, well, that, that makes sense, I guess. Honestly, no. There'll be a there'll be a thing. I don't know that we really have much to go back on with the Romulans. I don't know who the next big bad's going to be, but I don't feel like it's going to be the Romulans. How about Narek when he finds out his sister's dead? Is he going to seek revenge? I don't think he gives a rip. Oh, I don't know. They had a pretty big hug there on the board cube. I know. And- and where is Narek? I mean, obviously he wasn't on the ship at the end. Where did he go? We didn't see any closure there. I think he is going to reactivate Sutra, and that is going to be our main villains for season two. He kind of had a thing for Dodge, remember? Or Soji. Well, Dodge is still there. Or not Dodge, but Soji's still there. All right. So he, he wants the gold version. Oh, geez. Well, I'm serious. I think that's who's going to be the main villain for season two. Going off what we know right now. Maybe Lore. Lore comes in. Boom. Yeah, Brent, Brent, Brent Spiner's done. No, nah, I disagree. We have so much galaxy to go and, and expand on. Like, if you imagine where we were at with the original series to Next Generation, Next Generation to the end of Next Generation, you know, in the short time frames we have between these series and between the start and the finish of these series, how much bigger the 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 galaxy got that the alpha quadrant got th- there's so much that we could go and do here that I don't know that we're going to see a traditional villain. I think we're going to see someone new or we're going to see something new. Um, and I believe that we're going to go spend some time out on the fringes again, not, not like deep space nine fringes, but like out on the fringes where we haven't been before. Same ship, same crew. You mean the lesser Yeah. I think we're going to be on there. But there's so much galaxy we can explore, Brad. So many different ships. I I think you'll have Picard back in good standing with Starfleet and the Federation. Yeah, he may not have the uniform on, but I think he'll be an ambassador at large. Um, And like the edict of the old next generation, back to being an explorer. Like the last four movies you got with Picard were all about combat and fighting the big bad and He's always been an explorer at heart. He, this crew that he has, 
even Elnor to some extent have all been damaged in some way. And they were all starting to build back up into a family, which is what the crew of the next generation was. So I, I don't know. I think he'll have a little bit more validity. He won't have to do everything backhanded and ask for help at the last second. I think he'll get that stamp and, and you'll start to see people revere him like they did in the past. Um, that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, kind of along the lines of what Brad said, like, who, who are we going to find next? And, you know, how are we going to help them out of that situation and get back into some of that classic Star Trek? And and if it's not all serialized, like, I'd be okay if it was two five-part stories instead of, you know, just one continuous story. But I'm all about it. I, once we've gotten past this, and like I said, I've listened to you guys, your podcast on Next Generation and listened to your uh, first season. Whew! Yeah first seasons are tough for everybody. So I think season two is just really going to expand on those horizons quite a bit. What do we think about Picard being in the Gollum? They kind of referenced it as they didn't change much except for fixing his brain issue. Do you think there's going to be any, any more coming that though? Or you think we're just, it's just going to kind of be in the background. Well, they didn't hype up any of his skills or, you know, he, he said everything works. So he's fully functional like data was at least. Yes. That's what I heard too. Well, all right, so any final thoughts on uh, season one of Picard? Ben, you said it great already that, you know, this is the first season. It's only going to get better from here. And I, I completely agree with you. Uh, I will ask you guys this, though. Who is your favorite character and your least favorite character so far? I think my least favorite is Narek. I think I'm saying that right. I just think he was a, uh, he was a pawn for O and his sister. Uh, he was... To, uh, not to sound you know like that guy but that's typically a in a older movies that was a role of the female to go in and use their sexual attraction to get the the information from the the male character and he was very much played that way and i just don't think he was he wasn't very pivotal uh to a point uh so i, I just didn't like him. I didn't like his arc. I didn't like anything uh, he had to offer in the way of characterization. And I think my favorite character, um, as much as it, it's not a new character, but I think Seven, Seven's arc in this, uh, to see, you know, from where that character ended on Voyager to where she is now, like so much of that backstory to be filled in and find out what happened. Uh, I just think, that was a tremendous uh, arc for Jerry Ryan to play. So probably seven and what little time she had on the show. I, I think she did a phenomenal job. Least favorite character for me is Raffi. Um, just, I don't know. There's something about her. I'm just not a fan of uh, favorite character is definitely Rios. Love him. Favorite character was Elnor. Uh, least favorite character was Gerardi. I think Soji was my favorite. She just, I like, I thought the actor did a great job. I didn't really know what her role was going to be in the show. Uh, but I, I liked it that she kind of evolved as the show went on and learned more. And then obviously at the end, she did the right thing. So I, I liked her character a lot. Least favorite probably for me. I'm, I'm going to agree with Ben and say Narek. He just, he was, seemed whiny. And I don't know, at times he seemed really smart and other times he seemed really lame. I don't know. I, I don't. I didn't. wasn't a big fan of his character, and I'm kind of sad that I think he's going to be uh, the main villain in season two myself. So I hope I'm wrong. All right. Any final thoughts, guys? Very excited for what season two is going to bring us. I had a lot of fun watching season one. It was definitely an enjoyable ride. There was definitely some things that, as you're watching, you're like, "Oh my gosh, this is kind of corny," but then they got some awesome parts and awesome throwbacks. Um, as far as a Star Trek series goes for me, it isn't up there with DS9. Um, I'll be honest, it, it's it's almost up there. It's right behind the next generation, though. So DS9, next generation, and then uh, Picard. So I enjoy it quite a bit. I'm really looking forward to continuing the show. I, I agree with Will. It's definitely up there in my top three. Uh, and I just want, did want to say one other thing that kind of I didn't realize till after I'd watched the episode. Uh, but that scene that we were all talking about where um, 
where data moves on from this plane of existence uh, and they are playing the song blue skies, which he sang at Riker and Troy's wedding. Uh, that actual track is sung by the young lady who plays Soji, which I think even adds a little bit more impact um, to that scene. So uh, again, it's somebody said it earlier. Like I will probably go, I think it was will, I will go back and watch this episode, probably the last two episodes a couple more times just to, to get it all. But I, I think it, <clears throat> kind of what you guys said earlier in the season, like it started off really slow. Like you really had to invest some time in this, but the closer we got to the finale, I think it just, it was picking up speed and it was going downhill and it was just going fast. And, and I think we got a pretty decent payoff and I actually kind of like the fact that we didn't get a cliffhanger because now we have a whole year just to, to sit and think about this season and what the future lies for us. So I'm pretty excited. I think it's really good track. I'm looking forward to the next season. Uh, I, I'm curious about where we're going to go. I'm, I'm really excited to see where we're going to go with this. I'm glad we got Patrick Stewart back. Um, I don't, I couldn't honestly tell you where it falls in my rank of, of Trek right now. I'm kind of burning back through all the seasons again on my own. And, and I'm just now getting through Voyager and sort of falling in love with that season, that series again for different reasons. So I'm going to uh, withhold that until later on. But I think right now I've got um, my feelers are pointing out towards Discovery right now. I was going to ask that question. Does Did Picard hype you up for Discovery, Will? You're the only one of us that haven't watched it, hasn't watched it. So I am on episode four of Discovery right now. Um, I have a new appreciation for the style that, discovery has um having watched picard all the way through now i enjoy it i've enjoyed it so far i'm not as enamored with it i tried to watch it when it first came out the season one but well, i just i don't know couldn't get into it maybe it's because i you know recurring characters and people i didn't know and i, I want to see remembering faces and that's again one of the reasons i like picard because you know i get to see uh Riker, I get to see Troy, I got to see Picard, you know, I got to see Data, you know, I got to see these characters that I already know. And that throwback was was awesome for me. So and I know we get to kind of see a young Spock, you know, and, and you see Sarek and you, you see some characters, but I don't know, it just doesn't have any nostalgia for my for me. And I'm I'm I want to like Discovery. I I guess I just gotta continue push myself through it just like uh, when I first started watching DS9. I mean, if it wasn't for Ben, I would not have watched DS9 at all. I just could not get my head around wanting to watch it. And then listening to him talk about like the show and the storylines and the plots and the subplots and all the subterfuge and all this other great stuff that the series has to offer, I missed out. So I'm definitely going to give it, based on your recommendation, Eric, I'm going to give it a, a good uh, list or a good watch, a good try. I'm going to at least get through season two. And when season three comes out, I'll let you know. Season two is where it really shines. Uh, season three is, it said coming soon. I, I assume it's going to be the next month, but we'll, we'll see. I'm super stoked for it. It's discovery. What about you? What your final thoughts there? Uh, I'm not going to rank it. I agree with Brad. I'm, I, after one season, I don't feel like I can really rank it. And, you know, discovery, the first season wasn't that great. I mean, I was, I liked it, but it would have probably been ranked, I don't know, fourth or fifth for me at that point. Um, but season two, wow, like it blew my mind and I thought it was fantastic and moved it up to one of my favorite series. Uh, I, I can't wait for season three. So I, I'm not going to rank Picard right now. I, I like season one a lot and I'm going to keep singing its praises for sure. I'm excited to see what they do with season two. I've already told you guys what I thought. I had another, a, another idea in my head though. What if, uh, what if they go on a, a full save all the XBs mission? And they tried to save them all, or the, actually, they they got they shut them all off the board cube, didn't they? So there isn't any actually to save besides the the ones that survived, I guess. So that would be a very short story. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I don't know where season two is going to go, but I'm excited to find out. That was a good callback for the blue skies too, and I also loved the music when uh, Starfleet arrived. You you knew who was coming, which is awesome. When the whole yeah. fleet dropped in, and then it was Riker, which is just amazing. I loved his line about the pizza. Did you guys already mention that? <laughs> no. I. You expect me to sit there and make pizza or something like that and let you in the have forest. All the fun? Yeah, that was fantastic. Oh, oh, one other thing, guys. I forgot. We never found out about that captain that, that knew where the solar system was. Think that'll come into season two? That knew where the planet was that uh, 
Riker's daughter text texted. Oh, you know what? I didn't even I haven't thought about it since that episode, but I mean I guess it depends on if we see Riker again. Mud. It was, I'm telling you it was mud. Harry Mud. I mean he'd be too old unless like like we said he got he's in like a a robot or something. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, Mud's last episode in the original series was the planet of the androids. So it still could be. All right, guys, thanks for listening to our podcast. Please do me a favor. Check out our website, maturemindedgamers.com. Have yourself a great night.